Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at something uh, somebody was asking about and they're asking about the APU and kind of what's the point and why does it exist on big airplanes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Boeing 787 and we're going to play with it just a teeny tiny bit to kind of show you what it's all about. At the end of the day, in the short version for those of you who like to TLDR, it basically provides us with air and power. Let's check it out. So we're in this lovely plane. This is a Tweed New Haven Airport. Now, believe it or not, Tweed New Haven now services 737s, which I'm so amused by. Because if you take a look, getting into this airport is like there's like a little like crosswalk and you go bop, bop, right into this building and walk out to the jetway. Very unscientific in my opinion. But like I said, I love stuff like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So I'm going to go to my overhead panel. Now on a Boeing or any very, very large, large aircraft here, you have one master battery switch. Typically, if you're on a 747, you actually have multiple batteries. Some airliners, especially uh, business jets, also have multiple batteries and basically when i click this button all i'm doing is connecting the battery to the electrical bus now the electrical bus on this aircraft i'm actually going to disconnect the apu here because it doesn't make sense the electrical bus oh i can't click these switches the electrical bus is going to basically feed into these different systems we have all our big generators from our engines are going to feed into the ac we have some external power if we need i can actually pop that on right now of course we have the apu generator from these two buses it's basically going to feed out you know so you have a left and a right one to the rest of the aircraft and all the cool buttons here which again who Who's the guy who puts all these buttons on? Jeez, man. So I'm going to turn this one on. It's going to, you know, and usually in the real aircraft, it goes, you know, everything flies on, all the needles all spin and all that other stuff. But again, it's super fun. Notice I have an external power. We're not interested in that. Instead, we're interested in this little tiny switch here. This is APU. APU stands for Auxiliary Power Unit. It is a miniature, 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 miniature gas turbine. In most large airliners, it's right here. If I actually zoom in just a teeny tiny bit, this little tiny hole right here is actually the exhaust for the system. And there'll be a fan that will actually open up our little hatch that will allow air to run into it. So what I do is I put it on the on position, it's going to yell at me, and then I click it to the start position. What I've done now is I've used the electrical power in the battery to start spinning that. Now, once it gets up to a specific RPM, what it will actually do is it'll catch and it'll actually start running on its own, basically providing us with a little bit of electrical power. Now, depending on what system you have set up here, I could go to electrical. Unfortunately, the button doesn't work. Uh, if we could push that button, you could actually see how the electrical power is actually changing throughout the rest of the aircraft itself. But that is going to be one of the first things that we would notice normally when we run the APU. So what's going to happen now is that little tiny APU running inside here now is now providing two things. It's providing us with compressed air, which we need because that will power our air conditioning systems. In this particular aircraft, the air conditioning systems are basically over here. These are called your packs if you're looking for the fancy term for it. But it also gives us electrical power. So I'm no longer discharging the battery on this aircraft. All the electricity is now being provided from that little APU, the auxiliary power unit. Now, why don't we just go ahead and start our jet engines using batteries? Now, you're probably curious about that. But the reality is the reason we don't do it is because they're so large and heavy, we would need gigantic batteries. You know, it's a lot cheaper than gigantic batteries and a lot easier and lightweight is that little APU. So what's actually going to be happening here is I'll switch this back to stat. I'll go back to a uh, normal page here. Realistically, it's like, come on, man, just put it, these buttons are so valuable. I want to be able to see those other screens. I don't know why they're so mean to me. So what's going to happen is when we start this airplane, we're basically going to take compressed air away from the APU, run it through the engine to basically uh, false start it, then we're going to introduce fuel and a spark to get the whole process started. So when I come up here, oh, of course, you've got your big old engine, uh, starter gauges. I really need better buttons for the uh, purposes of moving my head around here. One of these days, one of these days. So when I'm starting this aircraft, um, by the way, this should be on. What you're really doing is you're just redirecting the air from that engine, which, so which is going to cost it a little bit of electricity, meaning it has to run faster, into the engine to get it spinning. Let me show you what I mean. Click. So now what's going to happen is you can see that that air is now pushing into here, which in the normal plane, you can't have their air conditioning running because it'd be uh, too much of a demand on that system. And also your APU would start running a little fast because it would still be trying to provide electrical power. Now, the, because this engine spins so fast, all this compressed air is just slowly starting to overcome all the inertia on this aircraft. When we're ready to actually start it, we actually introduce fuel directly into the engine. Now, because this is a later model version of this style airplanes, when I click the fuel control switch, what you're actually doing is you're giving authority to the fuel system in order to go ahead and introduce fuel into it to go ahead and engage everything here. So what's going to happen is you're going to cross the magical threshold, fuel is going to be introduced, a little bit of a spark is going to be introduced, and then everything's going to be done with it. So we'll go ahead and confirm that we have fuel in all of our systems. And that sucker should turn over quite nicely, which is exactly what it's doing. So now what's going to happen is all that fuel, all that pressure is from the APU is now going to start relieving. Your APU RPM would start coming down. Things would go 
and start flickering on one side because remember aircraft power systems are isolated from each other in case of emergencies. You wouldn't want that to be a problem. And now the engine is started on its own. What's actually going to happen now is we can use the APU actually to start this other engine uh, to actually control that in this plane. We have our little opportunities up here. You can basically shut the pressurization on and off depending on what you need it to do. Again, each system slightly different the way that it's designed. What we're going to do instead is we're just going to grab that APU again, come up to the start, go click, and we're going to just run it up from the other engine. Now, if you're running both the engine's compressed air and the APU's compressed air at the same time, this number will start climbing very quickly because you have just about double the available compressed air to try to start turning this thing over and getting us going. So now that I remember the fuel pumps this time, we can actually give it just a little moment, just a little moment, just a little moment, just a little moment, and we go click. And what that's going to do is, like I said, it's going to give that system authority to go ahead and get started. And since we did turn on all the fuel pumps, ah, there it goes. It's going to go ahead and start spiking. There it goes. Exhaust gas temperature is going to come up. And if you actually look in the back, oh, I don't really have a good view of this, unfortunately. Yep, you're going to start seeing all these heat waves start appearing around the actual engine itself because it is now a running rather combustion. If you actually look at the front of it, you can see that these two engines are spinning pretty darn fast. And that guy would have been sucked in a long time ago, but it's a shame that he got in the way. Now, you're probably sitting there going, okay, well, this was, this was informative. I'm glad I understand what an APU is. Uh, does an APU not use fuel? Um, no, it uses quite a bit of fuel. So the other part is, and now this is an interesting one. You're probably saying, okay, fine. Um, don't you have external power in this aircraft? Yeah, I do. Cool. And now I'm running off the external power. So you're probably saying, um, if we just need electrical power on the ground, uh, we're going to run external power. Yeah. Actually, in the old days, I was actually talking to an airline pilot about this, and he was commenting the fact that the APU, because it's your own motor, is going to provide you better, cleaner power, finger quotes, I don't know what that means by that, other than probably consistent voltage amperage, than you're going to be getting from plugging into the airport itself. There are actually some airports and some airliners that you can plug in an external air source, start your engines off of those entirely without shutting on, turning on your APU in case there's like an APU failure or something like that. But in this case, my batteries will never die because I'm running this. However, if we try to go ahead and cart the engine, now this is interesting because you're noticing that the N2 is coming up, meaning that we're actually having rotation of that engine. Now this bothers me like you could not believe. I have no source of pressure. Like if I shut these all off, that better not still be... Oh my gosh. Well, we found another bug to put on the uh, big list of Microsoft bugs here. This aircraft, I don't think, can be started electrically. Um, if it would, I imagine all these panels would probably fade. But other than that, it's just kind of a fun little thing that I just encountered. Now I'm actually kind of curious. Will it actually let me start electrically? Sorry, this was a bit of an aside, but I just discovered this. Indeed, so you can actually start without even turning the APU on. But in a real plane, that would be verboten. Other than that, enjoy.